Welcome to the One God Report podcast. Bill Schlegel here. This episode is called Little Known Facts About the Trinity. And this is a review and recommendation of a short book that somebody sent me. It's recently printed. The author is P. Stein Cole, whom I've had some brief email correspondence with. I found this book to be one of the best ones that can be used in an evangelical way for friends and family as we talk to them about who the God of the Bible is for several reasons. The first one is it's not very big. It's about 100 pages long. It's not a daunting read in that way. Of course, there are some great books that have already been published like Keegan Chandler's books and Sir Anthony Buzzard's books and John Shaneheit's books. And these are all great books, but they're fairly large. As I said, this book is about 100 pages and it looks like I could read it. It's something I could hand to somebody else and say, oh yeah, I can, I can handle that. So that's one reason. And the second reason is the author writes well, just enough challenging to get a person to think, but he's still sensitive to his reader. And it's a well-organized presentation of some of the problems with the Trinity and looking at some of the main Trinitarian philosophical claims and ideas and proof texts, but just in a very brief way, touching on these subjects and showing that there's real problems with believing that the God of the Bible is a trinity. So I really recommend this book. It's 10 bucks on Amazon. I'll put a link, of course, in the show notes. I understand the book is also available on the Amazon sites for Canada, the UK, Australia, Europe, etc. So let me encourage you to get the book and write a review on Amazon. Take a look at it. Like I say, I think it's really a, a good book to pass on to others as we continue to do the best we can to testify to the God of Israel, the God of the Scriptures, and his Messiah, Jesus Christ. Trinitarians, you should read this book. You should know what you believe. I know that as a Trinitarian, I didn't know what some of the main claims of Trinitarian theology and the deity of Christ belief really entailed. For instance, if you're a Trinitarian, do you know what the concept of eternal generation of the Son means? I didn't. Check that out. Is the Son begotten or unbegotten? Or is he eternally begotten, eternally generated? Are these claims biblical? These are essential claims of Trinitarian deity of Christ doctrine. Check it out. You should know in your own belief. I just wanted to read a few things from this book to give people an idea of its contents. He starts out by asking the question, what is the Trinity? The scriptures are silent on this question. The Bible never describes God as a plurality of persons coexisting in a mysterious Godhead. There is no chapter, not one paragraph, not even a single verse in all the Bible in which the doctrine of the Trinity is explicitly expressed. Now, once again, if you're a Trinitarian and you think that statement is incorrect, then just open up the Bible, show where God is described as being three persons in one. Any verse, one single verse in the scripture that says God is three persons in one. The author states that the greatest of all paradoxes concerning the doctrine of the Trinity is that despite the supposed claim that it is central to the Christian faith, for all practical matters, the doctrine is ignored. People don't really talk about it. They don't discuss it. They don't pray to the Trinity. In the world of evangelical Christianity, converts are never informed that a Trinity even exists when they are led to Christ or have their born again or come to Jesus experience. Trinitarian pastors and apologists insist that believing in the Trinity is essential for salvation, yet calling on or believing in the Trinity is never preached to potential new converts. You never heard Billy Graham say, Believe in the Trinity and you will be saved. Believe in the Trinity and your sins will be forgiven. The Trinity is something that's presented later 
there's a bit of a bait and switch to the way it's presented. People signed up for something. That is, they believe in the death and resurrection of the Lord Jesus for the forgiveness of their sin. And then somehow they find out later that, well, the God who did this is the Trinity. But that's not what they heard from the beginning, which reminds me of evangelism in the state of Israel. People don't come and say, oh, Jesus is God. Jesus is God right away. They say, well, Jesus is the Messiah. Jesus is the Messiah. And then later on, you find out that, oh, really, you know, yeah, Jesus is actually really God dressed up in flesh and God's a trinity. That's not what the original deal was. That's not what the original presentation was. The trinity is sort of slipped in through the back door. The author suggests that one of the reasons why so many Christians line up behind and give lip service to the trinity is simply because no other option is given. And to discuss any other option is banned with anathemas and threats and intimidation, dismissals from employment even. So we want to show people and to declare to people that there is another option for understanding who the God of the Bible is. The author describes how Christians are expected to embrace though not necessarily understand the doctrine of the Trinity, in order to be worthy of the designation of Christian, even though the doctrine is confusing and contradictory, widely disputed, not found explicitly in the scriptures, advertised as central to the Christian faith, yet in reality not mentioned or explained to new converts, rarely talked about from the pulpit in a systematic way, having no practical dimension in the lives of Christians. If you ask the overwhelming majority of Christians about what the Trinity is, they would give an answer that Trinitarian theologians have declared to be heresy. The author focuses in on the declaration of Peter. Jesus asked Peter, who do you say that I am? And Peter said, we believe that you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And the author correctly clarifies what the definition of Son of God is. That is, it's not God the Son, but rather that the nation of Israel was itself the Son of God and the promised king who would come to take the nation's destiny on himself would likewise have that title. That's the biblical definition of Son of God. The title, Son of God, biblically, has nothing to do with being deity or being God. God is not a son in the Bible. Son of God is a title mostly for humans in the Bible, never for God. And the author, as I mentioned, just briefly relates to some of the major proof texts of the deity of Christ in Trinitarian world, like John chapter 1. His understanding of John chapter 1, I don't agree with. I don't think that John chapter 1 is describing the Genesis creation. I think it's describing the man, Christ Jesus, who is metaphorically called the Word, through whom God brings about a new beginning. But even so, the author recognizes the inconsistencies of the Trinitarian interpretation of John chapter 1, verse 1. The author goes through some of the biblical ideas of what does it mean to be sent by God, and how about to worship Jesus. So many people think that if you worship Jesus, that means he's God. And the author describes the biblical concept of agency, which he says, is one of two best-kept secrets within Christianity, which, when understood, greatly helps clear up the confusion that sometimes occurs regarding Jesus' relationship to God. And I agree with this 100%, that I know as a Trinitarian Christian for decades, I really had no concept what the idea of agency was. And he makes the point that the Christology in the Gospel of John is not incarnation, but it's agency, that is, that Jesus represents God the Father, and that there is a unity in purpose and work of the Father and the Son. We see God through the Son, the call to honor the Son as one would honor God. This is the language of agency and sending. And then he briefly and concisely describes what Jewish preexistence means to be for known or pre-known in the scripture. Of course, God had a plan for the Messiah to come. So he's hitting many of the main issues and proof texts. 
Matthew 28, 19, go and baptize them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Is this a description that God is three persons in one being? He describes the problems with considering the Holy Spirit, the supposed third person of the Trinity, to be an actual distinct person. He has a good section on the historical development of the idea of the Trinity, that the understanding of God and Jesus of the second century Logos theologians was very different from later Trinitarian definitions of who God and Christ are. And he quotes a somewhat recent interview with Dr. Stephen Nemish and Dr. Dale Tuggy on the Trinities podcast, where the two are describing that theologians' versions of the Trinity are very different, very different from each other. Trinitarian theologians and pastors may use the same words and similar language, but they have totally different conceptions of who or what the Trinity is. One Trinitarian theologian's idea of the Trinity would be anathema to another Trinitarian theologian. The author as well presents scriptures that declare that God is not a triune being, not a triune essence. And he gives 21 declarations where there are no verses in the scriptures describing such things as this. There are no verses in the Bible that define God as being Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. There are no verses in the Bible that reveal God as three, three in one, or as a group of persons, or distinctions, or properties, or substances, or relations, or forms. There's no verse in the Bible that say that the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are co-equal. There are no verses in the Bible that say that Jesus has or had two natures. There are no verses in the Bible describing Jesus as a God-man, as fully God and fully man, or as half God and half man, etc., etc. 21 of these. There are no verses in the Bible that say that we must believe that Jesus is God in order to obtain eternal life. There are no verses in the Bible that declare that we must believe that God is a trinity to obtain eternal life. And the author very gently then encourages people to investigate for yourself. Take a look. Don't just depend on tradition for our understanding of who God is. Now we have the resources that we can read and understand the scriptures. So, I highly recommend this book. Take a look at it. I think it's going to be a good one to hand to people and say, look, at, here's what I believe. I may not agree with everything, every interpretation in this little book, but this is the basics of why I don't believe God is a trinity. P. Stein Cole, the book's well put together. Thanks for doing it. Yishma'u the Yishmahu. The humble will hear and rejoice.